I'd say build a team. I'd say surround yourself with the people that you trust, the people that are talented, and the people that you know are with you on your vision. Yeah. If you surround yourself with those type of people that believe in your vision, that will support your vision, you'll be successful. Yeah. Trust me, you'll be successful. Hey guys, we appreciate you guys checking us out again on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever it is that you like to catch your favorite podcasts. And we have a wonderful guest today, Mr. Michael Crowder of OKC Soda and Core Fresh is in the house. We're going to talk about his businesses. We're going to talk about leadership, entrepreneurship, beer, of course. I think we're even going to talk a little bourbon, supposedly. Casey, what's going on, bub? Oh, man, just uh, sitting back here and enjoying a fancy dance. I tried the new ones out, and I'm getting back around the world, man. We're, yeah. get, we're getting back to the, to, the, to the OG. You ready for episode number two of the day? Man. Back to back? You know, it would be, um, you know, it, it, you bringing beer in makes it a little more difficult. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to lie, you know. Well, we didn't know we were going to bust out the, the bourbon either. Huh? Right. Yeah, well, you know, have fun. You know, loosen up a little bit. That's, bourbon, that's what these are for, together, right? <laughs> we, even got, we even got Chris back here in the, oh, back yeah. hanging out with us. <laughs> I might have to Uber home, guys. I'm yeah. just saying. <laughs> so last episode... We showed the world a new beer, Res Dog, American Blonde Ale, dry hopped with hollow tower hops. And this episode, we have another brand new beer, White Cloud, Belgian style wheat beer, aka Wit. And it's named after Chief White Cloud, a chief of the Iowa tribe of Oklahoma, which is my tribe. So this beer holds a special place in my heart. I'm going to open this up. What are you drinking, Crowder? Man, I'm drinking Fancy Dance. I can't get away from it. There we it's go. pretty damn good. That's what I had last episode. Right. Man, you just can't beat it. it it's, it's always a, it's always a winner. <laughs> it's pretty good. But, man, the uh, the new one that you're drinking there, the the wheat or the wit yep. that you call it, yep. that's an amazing taste in the beer as well. Yep. So, definitely, uh, both of these are – these both these cans we're enjoying here are very fresh. Cheers, Crowder. Cheers to you, mate. So you guys can get the Res Dog and the Wit and the freshest batch of Fancy Dance at the Brewers Union this weekend, which is two weeks before you see this episode. But um, you'll be able to get all of these uh, beers at your favorite liquor stores, your favorite, uh, probably your local on cue. Um, always come to the Brewers Union and get it. The wits are summer seasonal, so we'll carry it throughout the summer. We'll probably brew a few batches of it. Um, and then the Res Dog is our new uh, year-round beer. We got rid of Oklahoma Gold, Crowder. Yeah. Did I tell you about that? Yeah, man, I saw that. I'm a little bummed out. Nah, well, this, we like, I like this one better. I, I think it's a little more of a oaky, oaky beer, Oklahoma style, so... Uh, you'll be able to get that pretty much all over the states. So. I did go to on cue at uh, Western and Memorial and yeah. saw Mosquito Hawk. I saw Fancy Dance. There I was go. pretty stoked about yep. that. Yeah. So that's yeah. good. That's really yeah. good. Yeah, it's getting starting to get out there finally. Yeah. So. All right, guys. Well, let's get into the interview. We got Mr. Michael Crowder. Like I said, he is the co-founder. Co-founder. Owner, OKC Soda Company. It's a local craft soda company that started in 2019 specializes in unique flavor profiles like strawberry milkshake and blueberry acai is that how you say that no, okay. no bro uh -oh, blueberry acai acai if you want to be fancy I'm not, I'm not you that can say fancy. acai but. okay Asa i'm gonna say blueberry acai see i just took a step up <laughs> i'm fancier <laughs> Uh, they use only reverse osmosis filtrated water, pure cane sugar, and natural flavors. Correct. Uh, part of MIO now, right? That's correct. We just right. uh, partnered up with the MIO, so we're very excited about that. And Benny Keith. Keith. And Benny Keith. They're our distributor, which is going to give us a lot more reach, so we're really excited about that. be all over the state now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Michael also owns Core Fresh. Core Fresh is a healthy grab-and-go business. It also started in 2019. Man, what a hell of a year for you, I'm right? I'm telling you, man. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Core Fresh uses fresh local ingredients, sustainable packaging, no preservatives, allowing the purity of different superfoods. Oh, superfoods. Yeah, we use pretty much superfoods in every dish. We try okay. to do it in every dish, especially, right. you know, most of the smoothies and most of the, like, 
the grab and go things that people are really gonna like. We try to put superfoods in everything because it's good for your body. Okay. Uh, the purpose of Core Fresh, of course, help rid the environment of single use plastic, right? Yeah, that's our Core Fresh water. It's a passion project of mine. You know, because I own a soda company and a canning line, I wanted to incorporate Core Fresh somehow in it. Yeah. And so, why not do a water yep. like a canned water and try to get rid of single use plastic? Yeah. And that's, yeah. You know, bottled water is just out. Now, cool. You know. Cool. So Benny Keith's gonna help you guys get all over the state. So let's everybody can see behind us the the design of the cans, which is pretty awesome. Um, and then you guys can see the Core Fresh cans here up front. And um, man, dude, like that's a you guys have since 2019, man. That's a lot yeah. of stuff happening. That's a big lineup. Right yeah, there. yeah. All right, so Casey, what did you say your wife likes the root beer the best? Which is crazy because my wife doesn't. I mean, her favorite is is the blueberry acai. Acai, acai. Mm. Oh, so but, she's fancy too. Yeah, oh yeah, she's super fancy. But um, that was her favorite. But Good. she tried the root beer and she doesn't like root beer. And yeah. she was like, "Hey, next time you're out, grab some of that root beer." Nice. So that's saying something. I like to hear that. I'm going to commit a cardinal sin here and ask a question of somebody that doesn't have a microphone. What's the, what are our kids' favorite soda? Strawberry milkshake. The strawberry milkshake. That, yeah, that's that's right. one of my favorite. It's yeah. really yeah. hard to choose between the strawberry milkshake and the orange cream because I'm an orange cream fan, man. Dream yeah. sickle. Come on, man. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm mean, always a root beer guy. The so. orange cream sickle is pretty legit. Yeah. But the strawberry milkshakes are most popular flavor yeah. by far. Like everybody asks for that. So. Okay. So tell everybody where, where can people find the soda? Well, because Benny Keith is distributing it for us now, it's in a lot of places. We just scored a deal with Scissor Tail Park, which is amazing. Mm. So, like that, uh, that already just kind of launched us into yep. a different level. But uh, so you can get it at Chisholm Creek and lots of places. You can go to Scissor Tail Park, Pink Itzel downtown, Bricktown Breweries, there restaurants. So, we're finally getting out there now, and it's taken a while, but thanks to Benny Keith and the MIO, I think yep. I think it's going to be in almost every restaurant, you know, hopefully yep. every restaurant, you know, real soon. Now, give us the uh, lowdown on the on the new shop, the soda shop. Well, we decided to open a retail store. Um, Core Fresh was doing well, and I wanted to open a second location, so my realtor showed me a great place in Chisholm Creek, and they had all these units going up, and I was like, man, this would be perfect for the soda company. Mm -hmm. So we have a retail spot in Chisholm Creek for the soda company and the second location at Core Fresh, and we're not only doing cans, we're not only selling cans of soda, but we're actually doing soda on the fountain, like a fountain mm -hmm. drink, but we're also doing floats, okay. and people have been like, oh my yeah. God, this root beer float yep. is the best i've ever so yep. casey your wife is gonna have to try the root beer float well hey that's what she's been using it on man that's okay. why she wants it <laughs> that's it yeah so we're excited about that okay now tell us a little bit more about core fresh so where's the first location at the first location is at memorial and in between rockwell and macarthur okay. right by deer creek kind of a really great you know location and atmosphere for people that want to eat healthy but they're professionals and they don't have time to cook for themselves mm -hmm. so basically you can come to core fresh grab and go some of the most freshest and cleanest meals that you can get no preservatives like super good food yep. and uh you can just take it home and heat and eat and then okay. to throw away the packaging or recycle it because yep. it's compostable there you go and then today was a big day for Core Fresh, right? That's correct. We opened our second location today. I'm really excited. It looks really pretty, and, and it's in Chisholm Creek as well. So you can see both OKC Soda Company and Core Fresh by going yeah. to, to Chisholm. Cool, cool. All right, man. So um, let's go uh, back to the beginning, man. Where, let's let's. What'd you do before the soda and Core Fresh? So before 2019, right? But, well, I was a manager at the Bricktown, Bricktown Brewery for years, like 10 years, uh, mm -hmm. the one downtown. Yeah. I started there as a and server. And that's the original, right? The original. Yeah, yeah the original one. And uh, I got hired by Charles Stout, who's just an, an amazing mentor for me. He taught me so much. I went from server to bartender to bar manager to front of house manager, then to assistant general manager. And that's where I learned so much of my leadership skills and learned so much about the beverage industry and the bar industry and the beer world. And that's where I come from is the beer world. Yeah. So what made you want to leave that? I mean, well, my two business partners, Mike Noonan and Pat Krensicki, great business partners of mine. Um, they actually were making soda for the Bricktown brewery mm -hmm. 
for some some other clients like people you know like the hard rock casino in tulsa Mm -hmm. and pops up in arcadia so they were making soda and they just started realizing that the margin on soda is pretty good and so they they approached me they said hey let's start our own craft soda company and i was like what the hell are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're in the beer world. Let's yeah. start our own craft brewery. And they were like, this is a means to an end. Yeah. And I was like, I get that. And so because the margins were so good and they showed me some numbers, mm-hmm. they said, hey, a small investment in this would take us a long way. Yeah. So I agreed. I think it was a good thing. And so this is, you know, we love craft soda and now we're like super passionate about it. Yeah. But it is a means to an end. We eventually would like to start our own craft brewery. Yeah. But that's, you know, five, ten years down the road once yeah. once that bubble kind of So just takes an all form. around beverage. Company. Correct. Yeah. Beverage company. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um was is this your first time to dip your toes into the entrepreneurial waters or it's my first time now okay. i come from a long line of entrepreneurs my yeah. mother had her own business she was an interior designer for years you know my stepfather had his own personal you know his own business a, a property tax analyst so mm-hmm. like i come from a long line of entrepreneurs yeah. so i'd always had that in my heart yep but this is my first actually yeah. like dipping my toes into it. So walk us through that um, kind of what was going through your head there is that as you're leaving the security. I mean, you said you were at Bricktown for 10, ten years. 10 years, oh, right? I was, I was getting paid well. Yeah. And so, <laughs> I mean, you, you had the security. Um, yeah. You got a family. So what, what, what was going through your head? Like how would you get past that mentality of uh, an employee to – being an entrepreneur, what was that like for you? Well, I don't think it was a very quick process, but I don't think it was a very long process either. Basically, I knew shortly thereafter I'd be, once I kind of got into management in the brewery, I, I was a bar manager for a while, so that's just all fun, you yep. know. But like once I started getting a front of house manager and assistant general manager of a restaurant, a, a big restaurant, yeah. I started to realize that training people mm-hmm. and and seeing how that pays off in their life yeah it it fulfilled me mm-hmm. and i knew right away that i wanted to be able to have my own business so yeah. that i could you know teach people and yeah. show people that kind of thing and and it felt good yeah yeah so you really that your that's your leadership skills became developed correct during that time correct. yeah yeah so what do you envision with OKC, OKC soda and core fresh as far as like, what's the purpose? What I know core fresh, you really described, um, the purpose behind the company. Do we have a story like that with OKC soda? Yeah, we do. Okay. I'll be honest with you. You know, we started the whole thing. It was really fun. It was great. You know, Mm -hmm. we decided to invest in a canning line. We started, you know, and that's all fine and dandy, but there's a kid named Ethan Hicks Uh from somewhere up in, I think it's Enid. I can't even remember now, but like this kid was like somehow got my name off some business registry and sent me a handwritten letter. And like we had just launched and he was like, I would like to know about your sodas and would you donate four sodas to us? And Uh I was like, bro, I'm sending you four cases. Yeah. And his whole class loved it. It was so great. And I realized that soda has no one single demographic. It can appeal to children, Mm -hmm. millennials, adults, elderly, you know, it's just such a great product. And so that, that's what made all me, Pat and Noonan, we all agreed that, you know, let's do this for the people, you know, this is such a great product and it tastes so good and it's a treat for Mm -hmm. anybody. And so that's kind of what kind of motivated us. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to do. So I've had people that I've, I've talked about your product to people before and I've had people ask, man, how are they going to compete with Coca-Cola and stuff like that? And I try to explain to them that you're not trying to compete with Coca-Cola. Why don't you give your best effort? What do I say to that guy? Well, let's put it this way. Five years from now, I'd love for Coca-Cola to come buy me out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But at the same time, we don't want to compete with those guys. Yeah. We're a local company. We're an Oklahoma company. Yep. And we want to stay that way. And yeah. that's that's what motivates us right now mm-hmm. is to give all those demographics some great soda here in Oklahoma. Yeah. Now, if we want to expand out to other states or whatever, obviously that's difficult with OKC Soda Company. Mm-hmm. But we can always change the name for them and help them out as well. Yeah. But right now, we're not, we're not motivated yeah. by trying to compete with those big guys. Yeah. We don't want to. Yeah, yeah. So 
2019, you did, you had so much going on. Yeah. Two companies. Now you're already opening a second location for one of them. Uh, the, the soda shop for OKC soda. Um, man, I mean, what I'm trying to figure out here, like you went from employee to this entrepreneur and just like full bore, what's the challenge been like for you to do so much, to be so busy and have so much going on? Like, how have you gotten through that? Well, I mean, I could ask you the same thing, Jake. Yeah. Let's put it that way. It's tough. It's yeah. tough. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't sleep much. Yeah. Uh, I wake up at 4.30 in the morning, yeah. and I try my best to be in bed by 10 because I'm yeah. just, like, brutally tired. Yeah. But that drive means a lot, yeah. and that drive is what keeps me going. Mm -hmm. And I want to be successful, not just for myself, but, you know, for my wife and for yeah. my family and for yeah. everything. And I think it's it's fun. It's, yeah. it's not only fun, but it's fulfilling. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's what that's what keeps me going. Yeah, yeah. So what do you do? You envision um, more companies opening other companies? I mean, I know there's some stuff we don't want to talk about right now, but is there does is there a branch of Core Fresh or mm -hmm. is there other things like that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. In fact, there's branches of the soda company and branches of yeah. Core Fresh that I yeah. want to do as well. Yeah. But for now, I'm focusing on just getting these two brands out there enough mm. to where they're successful and they can kind of have legs of their own or yeah. run on their own. Yeah. Once that happens, I've got some other projects in yeah. mind, but uh, yeah. we'll see. Like I said, I mean, the, the soda company is a means to an end for a yeah. craft brewery. Yeah. So eventually, yeah. I, that's one of the things I want to do, but yeah. there's, there's a, a lot more. There's a lot of breweries. <clears throat> you're you're kind of going in the reverse. You're going to go from soda to hopefully mm -hmm. a brewery. But a lot of breweries are getting into soda. Absolutely, I've seen that. Yeah, so I think it's yeah. it's almost a little more sustainable, right? I mean, soda, like craft beer is kind of hot now, it or is. it has been for the past Always, 10, yeah. 20 years or whatever. Soda goes way back. Way back. I can remember my dad telling me stories about the malt shop, going in there and getting a root beer float and Absolutely. stuff like that, you know? So, well, I, mean, I think what, what I see in breweries nowadays is that the tap room's where it's at. Yeah. And you want that tap room traffic. Yeah. So if you want that tap room traffic, you can't just have dudes. Yeah. You got to have their wives. You got to yeah. have their children. Yeah. And that's where the soda comes yeah. in. That's yeah. why so many tap rooms have wine now. It goes, goes well because together. Because they want the families to stick around. They want the yeah. families to drink all day. Or not, you know, drink all day, mm. but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, so it's, it's important to have all of those in a craft yep. brewery. And I think that's why a lot of craft breweries are doing that. Yeah. So with all of the... You know, two businesses, three physical locations, plus distribution, all that stuff going on. I mean, what are you doing right now to keep? You said you don't, you're not sleeping very much. <laughs> what What does Michael Crowder do to stay motivated, to keep himself sharp? You know, I think a lot of people that are maybe wanting to start their own business and they hear that you don't sleep, they're like, oh man, maybe I don't want to do this. Yeah, but right. There's ways to kind of get through that. What's, what, what's, what are your uh, well, as, tricks? Well, as Core Fresh, you know, yeah. I am, I eat nothing but amazing things. Yeah. Like I do not eat anything terrible for mm -hmm. me. And so my physical side helps me a lot. Yeah. Like that keeps me going yeah. physically, spiritually and mentally. Like I said, I just I, I need it so bad and I want it so bad. I want to mm -hmm. make sure that I fulfill that void of, entre you know, that I need. And so that entrepreneurship and that, that drive that keeps me going, that's that's what feels good to me. Yeah. And so that, that helps me go. So do you feel like you're, you're, that's your, your passion is the entrepreneurial side? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you have a passion for soda? Is that like something you're super, super passionate about? I think I have a passion for introducing people to soda yeah, because yeah. the flavors are the so impact. good and people are always just like oh my god that strawberry milkshake yeah, it's changed yeah. my life it's so amazing and mm -hmm. so like that's such a good feeling to yeah. hear that kind of stuff yeah 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 so do you, are you are you what do you do as far as trying to since you're just new to kind of you're pretty new to entrepreneurship you said you've had it you're definitely not new to leadership the idea of it, yeah or leadership yeah no. you've had you, you've been a leader and within the uh, companies you worked for in the past um what are you doing to sharpen up your entrepreneurial skills business business acumen and stuff like that do you read are you a book reader well i, I I'll, let's put it this way i'm not a huge book guy like yeah. book reader but i reference so many things that like mentors have taught me yeah 
and like I, I don't want to keep referencing you know this guy, but the guy who hired me at the Bricktown Brewery, you know, he he started that thing way yeah. back in 1992 yeah. or whatever. Charles Stout. I mean, he has taught me so much about mm-hmm. leadership yeah. and about entrepreneurship and about. So he helps me stay motivated in that way. Mm-hmm. So I don't really read a lot of books besides Cold War spy novels, <laughs> which I'm going to tell you right Uh-oh. now is my absolute favorite books to read. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, I do reference a lot of professional, you know, yeah. publications that yeah. help me. Yeah. I mean, I, I got wired and I have entrepreneur magazine. Like I read all of those all the time. Yeah. All right, man. So we're coming out. Well, I think we're coming out of COVID nineteen. We're kind of, I think, we're or we're in out. a different stage yeah. of it. We're slowly coming out. Yeah. So first, let's talk about Core Fresh on that. So, how what what was the effect of COVID nineteen on Core Fresh? Man, I got to be honest with you. It was we saw elevated sales. Yeah, I, I mean, can imagine because of the fact that we're a grab and go business. We don't yep. like our locations do not have any tables or chairs, so mm-hmm. we don't have a full service or dine in. So I didn't have to shut down. I was considered essential, yeah. which was man such a blessing like yeah. i can't even tell you yeah and i my, our core fresh actually did a lot better yeah. through covid yeah. and so and that's another thing that makes me feel good about core fresh because all those people around that area were loving it so much during the mm-hmm. covid they were like oh my god you guys are great you're delivering it to my house contact with yep. free delivery and it's the best food and so super yeah. healthy so like i was it was in a win-win situation with core fresh you know, soda got, company <laughs> yeah we'll not quite the same we yeah. were pretty much dead in the water yeah. while yeah. while the covid was going on and i've got to i've got to expect that people's eating habits may have gotten actually a little bit better during covid-19 i think so too cooking at home yeah. more not not going out not to getting eat. that processed food yeah yeah, yeah, yeah i agree I could definitely see how Core Fresh was. What about you? Um, I don't. So I can't. I, I can't, know Bobby probably made. I can't. You some yeah, good exactly. Fit. I can't put the credit on COVID nineteen. I, <laughs> I give the credit to my fiance deciding before COVID nineteen actually that she was going to go with an a vegan diet. Oh, that's awesome. That's so awesome. Just good to hear that. By the by, the fact that I'm lazy. <laughs> and, and don't would prefer i love that she right, cooks right. i end up eating whatever she's making of course of course she she does she's also a, she also has a big heart so, so, she, go vegan. so she throws in us a, a, a steak every, every once in a while of course, of course. or some salmon oh yeah yeah you know? love the salmon so um i've definitely benefited from her change in her Good. diet um, that's to I'm, some point. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Now I just have, but it, it doesn't overcome the beer consumption. No, of course not. It's, so, it's the healthy balance. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to adjust, adjust that a little bit. I mean, bit. I'm, I've been in the craft beer world forever. So like the craft beer I drink yeah. all the time. So that's why I eat so much core yeah. fresh and yeah. exercise because yeah. like you got to have that balance. Yeah. Yeah. So do, do you feel like that you're not, you, you feel like your health and your, your physical, uh, the, the way you are physically with your body that you're obviously in really good shape. Like that's that's that plays a big impact on your business, Huge. on how your business is run Huge and impact. managed. Not only on my business, but like like you said, on my what keeps me going. Yeah. Like I I don't hardly sleep, like I said, yeah. but the one of the main reasons I can afford to do that is because I'm health wise I'm I'm super healthy. You yeah. Know? So it's it's played a huge part. It's yeah. played a huge part. Yeah. So I want to talk about the on the soda real quick. So because we're talking about healthier foods and stuff like that now the soda it would on the from the outside would almost seem like a the opposite i knew you were gonna ask this (laughs) but but so the soda not quite as much sugar as correct correct traditional third less sugar as the big guys okay okay so no high fructose corn syrup caffeine free but so, I mean, let's be honest, it's still pure cane sugar. But you drink your soda, right? Oh, absolutely. You just told us. You just said you don't you don't you don't consume anything that's bad. I have to <laughs> QC everything. Uh, yeah. Quality control, bro. It's hard to I sell, gotta make sure it's hard good. to sell a product if you <laughs> haven't right, had it, right? right. And yeah. I gotta I gotta make sure it's good. Yeah. So what do you foresee at now that we're coming out of COVID nineteen? Um does now you're opening your second location with mm-hmm. Core Fresh. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like the amount of people that that were exposed to your product 
because of COVID-19, now that's going to carry you through, or, or are there some adjustments you're going to have to make to people well, kind of coming back to a different way? I don't think I'm going to have to make adjustments per se, but I think that people are going to go back to the restaurants yeah. for a while. Yeah. I mean, because they've been cooped up, they've been eating good, like you said, and they probably feel better, but yeah. now that COVID is kind of going back down, I, I bet you anything they're going to be going back to restaurants, yeah. eating the french fries, yeah. and doing whatever, but... If you look at the other side of the coin, that actually might help me too because, you mm-hmm. know, two weeks into going to these restaurants, I'm going to be like, oh, shit, I, yeah. need to, I really need to get yeah. back to eating healthy. So yeah. I need to call up Michael at Core Fresh yeah. again and get, <laughs> and get my meals done. So what's so. it been, a year and a half now since you started these two companies or a year? It's actually, I mean, I only opened Core Fresh in August, so it's only been about nine months for, oh, okay. for Core Fresh. For now, Core I Fresh. started it like in, two, you know, early yeah. in 2019. Uh, so yeah, it's only, it hasn't been long for okay. both companies. So during that time, like we said, it's your kind of first step into entrepreneurship. What's, what, what's your takeaways, man? Like what, what have you learned during this time about entrepreneurship that you didn't know before? It's tough, man. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. It's tough. You know, financially it's tough. Spiritually it's tough. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say physically, but you know, like I said, I, 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 you know, I'm super healthy, but mm-hmm. It's, it's I a thought toll. you were going to say you're a Greek god or I something. I mean, I might. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's, you know, being your own boss is mm-hmm. really difficult. It's stressful, but it, like I said, it's so fulfilling. And yeah. you know, you know all about that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those trade-offs. You can either be comfortable yeah. and work for somebody and be okay in life, mm-hmm. or you can take that risk yeah. and you can be super happy yeah and be stressed out for a while yeah. but you, you know it's going to pay off as yeah. long as you're doing it right and that's kind of where i'm at yeah. right now and that's yeah, there's what keeps something me about the um just being in control of your own fate true right like i hear people we talked about this on a previous episode but i hear people talk about the fear of of leaving their job oh, yeah. and going into their own business and then but i think guys like us kind of see it the other way like Working for somebody else and that person being in control of your paycheck and your family's livelihood, that seems scarier. That seems scary. Yeah, than 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 having your own business. Yeah. And now that I, now that we go th- to go back to the COVID thing. Yeah. I mean yeah. I'd have been furloughed. Yeah. I'd have yep. been furloughed. Yep. Yeah. Not only that, but now like a lot of people have asked, man, like you just got the brewery started and then this COVID-19 thing happened. Like they think I'm that I should be like freaking out. But like the fact that we both started kind of at the same time and when, when we did and now for us to have actually, cause that's the toughest time, the beginning, the first year, everybody's talking about the first year or the first two years or whatever. That's always the toughest time of sure. for any business. Sure. But then for the COVID-19 huh. to hit, right? Brutal. So it was tough. But the fact that you can get through that mm-hmm. and that should give you the confidence Absolutely. that you can overcome Absolutely. anything. anything. Yeah. yeah. So a couple hacks like us yeah. who just had never started we a did it, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's that, yeah. that right there. I think a lot of people are going to see – because I think now with COVID-19 – I think now's the best time ever to start a business. I agree. Like it's you're you're kind of you're learning obviously from being laid off or mm-hmm. furloughed or even yeah. I know a lot of people their position has just been eliminated. Sure. Completely eliminated. Absolutely. So like if there was ever a time to start a business, now's the time to do it. You're it, it's almost like the gates just been opened yeah. up for you. I mean, think about it. You're sitting at home for 2 months. Yeah. And you've got that time. Yeah. And it's either let's do it now. Mm-hmm. Or let's just sit on our ass and yeah. be lazy for two months. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people are, like you said, a lot of people have made that decision during yeah. that two months. You know what? I'm tired of working for somebody else. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have the fear of being furloughed or mm-hmm. losing my position. Yeah. I want to start my own thing. Yeah. So hopefully we'll start seeing that in Oklahoma. Yeah. So the sl- the sleepless nights you talked about and the stress. <laughs> I mean, what's like... Do you, are there times you just want to give up or do you ever have that thought like that feeling like oh my gosh I just can't do this oh yeah I mean when I first started core fresh we were way behind on construction mm-hmm. way behind on our budget like yeah. I was starting to feel the pressure and after we opened of course I'm healthy food company yeah and in the first we opened in August like mm-hmm. late August 
So like had a great September and October. And I was like, all oh, right, we're killing it. And yeah. then November and December hit and like nobody eats healthy in November yeah. and December. It's yeah. Christmas. Everybody's yeah. partying. I was just like, oh no, my sales plummeted. Nobody was coming around. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to fail. Oh man. And this doesn't feel good. Yeah. But we, we got out of it. And so there's, there was literally times where you're just oh, like, this yeah. is not happening. Oh Yeah. And the same with the soda company. I yeah. mean, Mike Noonan and Pat Krinsicki will tell you there yeah. have been times where we're like, okay, we can't afford cans right now. Yeah. We are so broke that we cannot afford cans. Yeah. But sure enough, something happens and somebody comes along and is like, yeah. you know what? Will you make me some root beer? I'll pay you $3,000 to make me a huge batch of root beer. And that yeah. saved us and that allowed us to buy cans. And then we just you know, yep. kept building off of Man, that. Man, I can't tell you how many people I know that have had businesses – and they quit right before the thing that was going to happen that would have saved them yep. was about to happen. You got to keep going. Yeah, you just you have to. Like, that's the key, going. isn't you it? Like you just through. have to figure out a way to go till tomorrow. And you got to have faith. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. Like if you've taken that step already, like if you've already taken that step to start your own business, you got to see it through. Yeah. You got to keep pushing. Because yeah. I'm telling you, I mean, depending on your faith and whatever you're doing, yeah. if you have that faith, you got to yeah. keep pushing. Man, I was It'll just, happen for that's you. Exact, that's exactly what I was about to say is yeah. just like, I mean, I'm not everybody agrees with my religious beliefs or my faith as a Christian, but like there is definitely something. If you don't believe in that, there's definitely something in the world that really favors people who have faith that things are going to work out. Absolutely. And then I can't tell you, man, with Skydance, I can't tell you how many times we were in a position where, you know, Bobby's consoling me as I'm in tears. Yeah. And some, I, it, a lot of people would say it came out of nowhere mm-hmm. that something came up that, that kind of, that saved us or, or fixed whatever issue we and were having. you can't having. put a name on it. Yeah. It just happens. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's like, I really think it's because, you don't give up. Mm-hmm. You don't quit. You were there for it when it happened. Like if you weren't even in the ball game, then you couldn't have taken advantage of right. whatever came your way. Yep. So I definitely having the faith and sticking to it, not giving up, things always tend to find a way to work out. That's the thing. That's the thing right there. If you keep going yeah. and you just keep trying, you've already made the decision. Like yep. don't stop. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah. Somebody's going to help you out. Whether yeah. it be karma, whether it be God, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It could be your mom. <laughs> you know, yeah. my yeah. mother, Liz Fleming's a saint. Yeah. I mean, she helps me <laughs> out so much. Like yeah. you, you just as long as you make that decision and you're working hard yeah. and you're true to yourself, it'll yeah. work out for you. It the, really will. The other thing too is like with Core Fresh, you have a you have a very clear purpose and a passion of something that you're trying to do that Absolutely. impacts people. Absolutely. Impacts the world. Mm-hmm. And people see that. And one of the things that I've learned where, I don't know, the stress doesn't go away. And I'm still always stressing out about the company. Sure, of But course. there's other times where I step back for a minute and it's either, this is either really happening or it's, or it's the beer talking. But I will, I've all, there's times where I feel like the, the, that what we're trying to do with Skydance is like just meant to happen like it's meant to be because i think people see the purpose behind what we're trying to do Mm -hmm. and there's people just willing to step up and willing to help out um it's almost like they don't want you to fail and if your purpose is strong then somebody's always going to be there to either point you in the right direction or they want to buy your product doesn't that feel good something yeah doesn't that feel good yeah it happens yeah and like that's no that's no lie yeah. Like if you work hard, people are going to help you out. Yeah. Yeah. And that's true. Yeah. Man, I, I I will say this. I think I really, I really do feel like that on the soda front, man, there's so many, like there, there's so many of these, you know, Coca-Cola and Pepsi and stuff like that. And there's not, there's not a lot of sodas out there that hit that heartstring. What we do. See, we have an advantage with the beer. Everybody's into local. Sure. Everybody's into local sure. craft beer. Right. And I definitely feel like with the soda, man, that's like something that you guys have that almost doesn't exist 
which is this local craft. Has that been something that's really pushed the soda for you, the local, the whole local thing? You have no idea. It's in the same realm yeah. as what's happening with beer? Oh, yeah. I mean, some of our accounts have literally said, oh, this sounds so fun. OKC Soda yeah. Company, yeah. we're an OKC small business. We want to be a part of that. Yeah. that that's amazing. And I, I can't, I mean, I, I will tell you that there's probably 13 different accounts out there that have mm -hmm. literally said, this is great, a local craft soda company. Yeah. I want to carry you in my local business, yeah. which has just been fantastic. Yeah, so that's that's a that's a product that's definitely made for made in Oklahoma. That's correct. The MIO, thing. the MIO has been huge. We're super excited about this partnership. Like yeah. they are inter they are opening so many doors for us and introducing us to the right type of people that mm -hmm. almost all of their clients want to be local. And, and loyal to local companies too. Yeah. And that's what we want to do. Yeah. So it's a perfect partnership. So what, what kind of scale can, do you see OKC soda getting, I mean, before the, the, the branch off ideas of the brewery and stuff like that, like how, I mean, how, what's the plan with OKC soda? How big do you think OKC soda can be? Well, we want to blanket the state yeah. like soon. <clears throat> like we will probably in 2021, we want to have, we want to blanket the state. Uh huh. And so the scale is different. Like right now we are brewing on a specific system mm -hmm. and we're canning in a specific on a specific piece of equipment. Yeah. Now we've looked at our scale and we've looked at what we can do and what we will do. And I don't think that there's that much yeah. upgrade that we would need in order uh -huh. to blanket this state. Yeah. Now, if you're talking about Coca-Cola and Dr. Pepper and all that yeah. kind of stuff, you know, yeah. we're talking about, counter pressure fillers that are you know four hundred thousand dollars that's not that's not yeah. us that's that's for that's if we wanted to like you know do yeah. texas and oklahoma or mm -hmm. texas kansas and louisiana that kind of stuff mm -hmm. but for where we're at i think our scale can grow exactly the way we want it to grow yeah. and it's just yeah. going to take a few upgrades and we should be able to do whatever we want yeah i always thought one there's some there's something to that that i always wanted for skydance which was you know i have friends or family that live on one of the coasts or way up north right and when they come to oklahoma they want to have brahms right of course. right <laughs> <laughs> i always thought that was cool yeah. or like you hear about people um Aishans. oh yeah Aishans. you know like people there's, i've there's, heard about this chicken place you yeah. guys got down here yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So that would be cool, you know. Yeah. So when somebody comes to Oklahoma, they gotta have OKC soda. That'd be great. Gotta gotta have it somewhere. I mean, find I'm it. hoping that that would be the case. Yeah, I've been to certain states where like there's a brewery there. Yeah. That, oh yeah. Like Wisconsin. You gotta go to that. Yeah, you yeah. got you gotta you gotta, gotta go have to New this. Glarus. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that that's pretty cool to be known for being the soda yep. for that state. Yeah, definitely. And I'll be honest with you, I think that's <clears throat> probably gonna happen. I'm hoping. I do too. Yeah, as long as we stick to where we're at right now and stick to our practices and the clean way we make these things, I yeah. think that it'll happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on on the on the core fresh thing, how many, how many, how many uh, locations are you gonna have? Are you just gonna keep I want growing? five. Really? So I have the one main location for Core Fresh, which has the kitchen. Yeah. And I want four satellite locations. So I've already got one. So I need three more satellite locations. And we'll feed those satellite locations from the main headquarters that has the kitchen. So that one kitchen can do that all those locations? Yep. Basically, wow. if, my, if my kitchen staff is prepping 12 meals of one mm -hmm. thing, there's no reason why they can't prep 32 meals of that same yeah. thing in one day. Yeah. And that's easy. Like my kitchen stuff's amazing. So like I want four other satellite locations mm -hmm. and then I'm not going to lie to you. I'd like to sell the whole thing after that. Yeah. <laughs> Once I get those five locations. Well, who there. buys core fresh? What kind of company? I don't know. Like a, a company like a snap kitchen or something like that coming into the OKC market here mm -hmm. in a couple of years. Cause OKC market is getting big. It's getting one of those huge locations, you know, those, markets that people mm -hmm. are like oh, we really need to get our stuff in okc yeah so if a, a place like freshy or snap kitchen or something like that yeah. came into the okc market and they see core fresh already has five locations yeah. why not buy that company yeah. that's, so that's that's uh that's where i'm wanting to go with core fresh and that that's when the brewery happens right <laughs> that's when i get the money for the brewery yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay so since you i mean Multiple locations. Yeah. How many employees do you have with Core Fresh? I got about nine. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So talk about how you've, the importance of the leadership skills that you learned from Bricktown Brewery mm -hmm. and how that's helping you with not only Core Fresh, but also the OKC Soda. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Yeah. It's huge. Uh, I learned in, while working for the Bricktown Brewery, I learned how to deal with the kitchen. 
mm-hmm. learn how to deal with executives, learn how to deal with customers, learn how to deal with my upper management, my regular management, yeah. my, my servers. Like, you have to know how to deal with each of those people individually. Mm-hmm. So I deal with my kitchen staff differently than I would deal with my front of house staff. Yeah. And I learned so much about how to communicate. And that's all through communication. Yeah. You get the communication down, you can talk to anybody. Yeah. And so my, my customers like the way I talk to them. Mm-hmm. My kitchen staff likes the way I talk to them. My front of the house staff likes the way I talk to them. And that's, that's where that entrepreneur that's what going back to what we were talking about that's mm-hmm. what make that's the drive that makes me feel good because yeah. i know that i'm communicating properly with all those people and they're all happy mm-hmm. and if as long as i take care of them yeah i'm happy they're happy so if you thought about as you create the five locations that you want to have um how do you manage that like how do you continue to have that same impact on your employees when you get to the point to where it's that big and you're just not going to be able to have it every single day face-to-face interaction with all of your employees that's true that is true now my wife ashley Mm -hmm. she will she will always make sure that core fresh's menu Mm -hmm. and core fresh's food in the product is going to be perfect that's just the way she is and that's you know bobby to you ashley is to me ashley takes care of all of that she makes sure all the product is perfect yeah I'll handle all the stuff. Mm-hmm. I'll go to every location every day, check on people, make yeah. sure everything's good, make yep. sure we're doing the right thing. But yeah. And that's where that healthy balance of having a wife that can handle that side of it and I'll handle this mm-hmm. side of it. And the same thing with the soda yep. company. Mike and Pat handle all of the production side. Yep. I handle all the business side. And yep. it's like a perfect marriage. Yeah. So, and, and, and this, I'm not going to go off on a tangent, but getting a team, surrounding yourself yep. with a team yep. is so important. Like yeah. you have to have a good team yep. in order to, in order to, to do it, especially on a large scale, yep. it, you got to surround yourself with the right people. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, definitely. Like you got to have the right people. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I coming, coming up through the casino business, I mean, at one yeah, point see, I had 350 you know. employees right. or whatever, but the, the biggest message I always gave my management staff was that if we, uh, if we're, if our success is fully dependent on my knowledge and ability, we're all screwed. Yeah, you're, (laughs) (laughs) but between all of us, we can figure it out and we'll be super successful. Yeah, absolutely. So if, if I have, if I had a guy that was really good with slot machines, I've got a guy that's really good with table games. I've got a really good marketing director, food and beverage. Mm -hmm. Somebody's really good. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no way for me to be able to do all of that and be the best at each one of those things, you know? So my best, uh, my best attribute was visionary knowing their strengths and yeah, weaknesses and supporting them yep, absolutely. so be, being and that's key yeah yeah being there for them being a servant leader mm-hmm. so my goal was just to help them get to wherever they needed to be yep. and if that meant them taking a job somewhere else that's fine like absolutely yeah it's got to be more personal than just what can you do for this never company. get mad at somebody who wants yeah. to further their life yeah yeah ever. i learned yeah, so that what, yeah, yeah so what was that like when you left bricktown brewery that they were good they were all good yeah and i told them about it long before i left yeah i said just to let you know i'm developing this company yeah and this is kind of what i want to do and this is so such weird time because this was like right around i was an agm at the time yeah. and i was right this is right around the time that they were thinking about making me a gm yeah and i could have stayed right there jake yeah. i could have yeah. stayed there and be a G, been a gm and yeah. been happy yeah. <laughs> but i had already i had already gone security yeah i had already gone forth on this idea and i had already yeah. started planning this and i told them about it and they were super cool yeah. they were super yeah. cool about it. they were like michael you know we wish you the best of luck for all yeah. that kind of stuff so it was easy so you mentioned your wife a little while ago so i let's talk a little bit about something that I think gets overlooked a lot with entrepreneurs is the importance of having your house in order when you're going to start. I mean, you've created a a big organization basically. Um, and you've got a lot to manage, uh, the importance of having that partnership with your wife, um, having that strong relationship, Mm -hmm. the, the personal side mm-hmm. of your personal life and how that affects your businesses. Well, I have two super important people in my life personally, mm-hmm. and that's my wife, Ashley, and my mother, Liz. Yeah. Like, they are super supportive of everything I do. Mm-hmm. Um, my wife and I work 
side by side. Like I said, yeah. she handles all the product. I handle all the business side. Sometimes that can be very rough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sometimes we do not get along and sometimes yeah. it is very difficult. <laughs> yeah. But we try to forget that when we go home. And my mom kind of like helps us with that. Mm -hmm. My mom is kind of like that mediator that helps us say, hey, you're doing a great job with that. You're doing a great job with that. Let's make sure that we're not losing focus on the goal. Yeah. Let's not get mixed up on petty stuff. Yeah. Let's make sure that we're doing the right thing and seeing the overall picture. So those are the two. And, and like you said, it's so important to have your house in order. Yeah. You have to. Otherwise, you're going to think about that. You're going to stress about that. Mm -hmm. During the times you shouldn't be. Yeah. During the times when you should be focusing yep. on the product, on the business, on the promotion, on everything yep. that you have to be focusing on to make a business successful. If you're not focusing on that because you're squabbling about this or that, not good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then on the on the work on the work side, the, the execution side. I mean, what's what are the main skills that you took from Bricktown Brewery, your time there that's paid off the most since you've started these two companies? I'm gonna go right back to it, bro communication yeah if you talk to your people correctly mm -hmm. and you listen that's actually more important yeah. not talk to you yeah. but if you listen to your yeah. people correctly you're mm -hmm. going to be successful yeah. because they'll tell you what they need and if you listen to what they need and provide them with what they need mm -hmm. to, to execute whatever you're trying to get them to execute yeah you're going to be successful yeah so yeah. the communication thing is huge listening communicating making sure that you're speaking with every single person in your organization, seeing mm -hmm. what they want, providing them with what they need, you're going to be yeah. good. Yeah. Then what's the the skills that that you wish you had that would make things a lot easier for you? What in other words, what's your weakness? <laughs> Don't get started on Where's where's my Michael weakness. Crowder's weakness and what's he doing to overcome it? Well, I think everybody knows my weakness is uh, mathematics. I'm not very good with <laughs> mathematics. So I wish I was more of a numbers guy. I wish I was yeah. more of an accounting guy. Yeah. And I'm starting to get the hang of it these days. But yeah. it's always been kind of my Achilles heel is um, accounting and yeah. numbers. I mean, but at the same time, I also just hired a great accountant. Yeah. So, you know, once you hire a great team, accountant, right? it's good. That's what I mean. It's surround yourself with a good team and you should be okay. But yeah, yeah. That's, that's probably my biggest weakness. Okay. Any uh, future flavors that you're willing to tell people about? Well, we're listening to this two weeks from now. <laughs> <laughs> we do have some flavors in R and D right now. Uh, Noonan has has been going, has been giving me lots of different ones. Yep. I don't know if I want to give any okay. away, but uh, let's just say there's a diet. Yeah. Okay. Oh, soda really? In the works, which everybody's been asking for. Okay. And we're using a very specific method to mm -hmm. make this diet instead yeah. of just like whatever all the other places, yeah. aspartame or whatever it is, you know, they're making diet sodas yeah. with. We're using a completely different product, mm -hmm. a much cleaner product. Um, I don't know if I want to. If I can say it or not, I, I have to ask Noon. To okay. Make sure. what's I, I want to be so, okay, be but but safe. on that same note, there then, like, what's that process like? So, um, I think a lot of people maybe don't understand that the planning that goes into coming out with a product or a new flavor of something or whatever. For you guys, what's that product like? Because on the soda side, so there's the three of you, right? Mm -hmm. And so everybody's got their own ideas, right. their own thought process of what they'd like to do, mm -hmm. what they'd like to see. What's you? What do you guys do as far as your process of coming up with new products or even just deciding on when to come up with a new product? Well, like how do you know it's time to come out with something new? I'll be honest with you. I usually, just, as far as the process goes, I usually let Pat and Noonan handle the process. Like yeah. they're the ones that experiment with everything and they know what they're doing. Like. Yeah. I trust those guys. And that's the key. If yeah. you trust your team and let them like, don't try to control those, you know, don't try to control your team. Let yeah. those guys do what they do best. Yeah. So I trust those guys to come up with the method and the flavors yeah. and whatever. If you're asking like, when do we decide yeah. to come up with a new flavor? Jake, <laughs> we you, have six. Yeah. Like, there's <laughs> enough right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can't. Cause yeah. First of all, we always said from the beginning, six flavors, a six pack. That works fine. Yeah. We don't really want to come up with eight flavors and then have to yep. have a six pack and a two yeah. pack. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, do you, I mean, so you don't, you try to kind of stay out of necessarily that whole formulation of the sodas and Correct. That stuff. Correct, I do. We'll leave it to the people that. Noonan and Pat are 
the experts in that. Yeah. I let them handle that sort of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I try to support them in any way I can. Mm-hmm. I try to give them as much support as they need in order to come up with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like that's not my ball game. You yeah. know, my ball game is to help them do the business side of it, make sure that we're promoting everything correctly, yeah. make sure we're getting into the right places. You know, that's my specialty. Yeah. And then another specialty that I have is building a team. Yeah. So I know those are my best players right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So why not treat your best players yeah. the best? Yeah. Yeah. I'll handle it, getting Benny Keith and getting the MIO and getting everything together. I'll handle that side of it. Mm-hmm. But let those guys do what they do best. Yeah, yeah. So since OKC Soda started, what's been the biggest challenge? What's the number one? I mean, obviously COVID. Let's throw COVID that. COVID was let's, a challenge. Let's throw that out. COVID was brutal yeah. for the soda company. Like yeah. we, like I said earlier, we're dead in the water. Yeah. Because like, right now we're not to that level of grocery store, yeah. a convenience store, you know yeah. that sort of thing. We're close, but we're not yeah. at that level yet. So we're in restaurants, yeah. you know, we're in mom and pop restaurants and, you know, restaurants in Bricktown and mm-hmm. gift shops and the zoo, you know, and that kind of stuff. So like we were happy to be in that. Yeah. When COVID hit, bro. Yeah. None of those places were yeah. open. So yeah. we basically thank goodness we didn't have to pay a whole bunch of, uh, of our canning line payment yep. and rent yeah. payment and stuff like that. So luckily we had some really great companies that helped us kind of like, Hey, you know what? Yeah. We'll let you just, we're just going to yeah. defer these payments, put them on the back end of your lease. So that helped us mm-hmm. tremendously. I mean, we were super yeah. lucky about that, but yeah, so, we were dead in the water. So it didn't affect core fresh as much. Correct. What's thank God core Fresh's biggest challenge has been, um, uh, you know, I'll be honest with you, and this sounds terrible to say, and I don't want to be rude to Oklahoma, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. Oklahoma doesn't eat super healthy. Yeah. There's not a whole yeah. bunch. Of, now, luckily, there's a growing community in Oklahoma yeah. that is super healthy, vegan, vegetarian, and I, you know, we embrace all those people, and they've yeah. been super good to us, and we love them. But it's been a struggle to just try to get Oklahoma yeah. to, to eat super healthy. So what do you do? I mean, how do you overcome that? You can't. You just got to keep pushing. Yeah. You just got to keep pushing. Just keep feeding it to people and keep showing them. Keep because focus on the people who, uh, who do want it. Yeah, because yeah. if you focus on that, they'll tell everybody. Yeah. I mean, people have told me, man, after I ate your food for like three weeks, mm-hmm. I feel so much more energetic. I feel yeah. so much more bad. I they, th- that sort of thing will take care of itself. And like yeah. you said, like we were talking earlier, if you have that faith, if you just keep pushing along, yeah. the word gets out, yeah. and it has, and that's yeah. that's that's a yeah, it's a promising thing. All right, man. So just a couple quick questions. Um, what is, what's the future hold for Mike Crowder? Is there, I mean, as far as um, you talked about the extra, the other locations might have some new sodas sure. coming out. Um, third business, fourth business. Are you a serial entrepreneur now? Are you, or are you going to focus on these products that you have right now? Just trying to push them and get through COVID-19. I mean, where's Crowder's head at? I'm going to focus on these two brands for another probably year and a half. Okay. Two years. Yeah. I think hopefully if things go the way they are, these two brands will be able to run themselves in about two years. You're not going to start flipping houses. Flipping (laughs) houses. (laughs) It was so funny. Because, it was so funny. A friend of mine was like, you know, my thing now is flipping yeah. businesses, and I was like, "Well, aren't you fancy flipping businesses?" <laughs> yeah, he's like, "I'm flipping businesses now." You tell him you've got a couple. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got some you can flip. Bro. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think, like I said, I'm gonna focus on these two brands for another yeah. couple of years, get Perfect. them going like on their own legs, and then I think I might venture into a couple other things. But yeah. That'll be for the next podcast. So, you, so you're, you're, you're <laughs> full-fledged entrepreneur now. Correct. Always. Yeah. Always. Yeah. All right, man. So where can people learn more about Core Fresh and OKC Soda? Simple. Like corefreshokc.com, mm-hmm. okcsodaco.com. Okay. Now, OKC, everybody is like, okay, so, okcsoda.com, and it's like okcsodaco.com, like OKC Soda Company. We, we actually really liked how OKC Soda Co. kind of rolled off yep. the tongue, so... Our website, okcsodaco.com, corefreshokc.com. Yeah. Um, those are websites. Obviously, the Instagram is kind of what we focus on right now. Yeah. Just because we do have websites for, for OKC Soda, yep. but, like, 
I mean, it's just a, it, it's a yep. very beautiful website. My sister-in-law is working on it. It's amazing, but it's more, the Instagram is really where it's at. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. sure you're all, yep. you mean, I know you <laughs> social media savvy guy. Yeah, you know, I wish. You, you I know wish. all of it. I wish. I wish. Okay. <laughs> I actually look at your social media Uh-oh. to see where I'm at on my social media and I'm way behind. Oh man, I'm looking at every. I was looking at yours to see where I'm at. Wait a minute, (laughs) but yeah, that's uh, so. Yeah, you can always do that. You can always go to those websites or those Instagrams. Message us. Let us know what you want. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, and you know, I always check those. I always listen to those. So it's not going on deaf ears. So if you guys want to message me or or find out about the product, let us know what you want. So the question I know you probably get all the time is where can people find the soda. Like where any specific like what where's the best bet? Well, we're we're super lucky, like I said, to have uh, Benny Keith distributing our sodas. Mm. Homeland just contacted. Us. I don't know if I told you that. But Homeland uh-huh. just kind of so that's really there you good. Go. Scissor yeah. Tail Park, yep. you know, uh, Pink Itzel, Social Capital, Social Capital downtown's yep. been killing it for yep. us. Bad Nona's is a great client of ours in Midwest. Mm-hmm. They're doing great. There's a lot. There's a whole bunch. But okay. if you go to our um, think it's our website it might be our facebook but just go to go to the social yeah. you'll find where we're at yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. you can taste these fine beverages because they're pretty okay. good they're pretty good so last question i call it the one thing the one thing the one thing so it's your last day on earth okay oh god what and where, where did this what? you've got you've got a, you give me a desert island question you got one <laughs> song to listen to mike you got a bright eyed beetles or the stones right yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't give me that question casey so you've got a young bright-eyed strapping fella who wants to be an entrepreneur or a leader and um he he's got one last chance to talk to you before you're gone what's the one thing you're telling him your biggest piece of advice that you want to leave with this person before you leave i'd say build a team i'd say surround yourself with the people that you trust the people that are talented and the Mm -hmm. people that you know are with you on your vision. Yep. If you surround yourself with those type of people that believe in your vision, that will support your vision, you'll be successful. Yep. Trust me, you'll be successful. Cool. Man, I appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, bro. Yep. So pe- good to see people you. may not know, but uh, I actually work with Michael almost almost daily. So his team helps with packaging our beer. That's We're, correct. <clears throat> they're helping with brewing the beer. That's correct. Um, so at Mike this point, and Pat, they do yep, it all. Yep. At this point in time, uh, we're basically business partners. So. Yeah. Uh, it's been it's been great. It's been yeah. really cool getting to know about the soda and stuff, yeah. man. I appreciate you coming on. Absolutely, bro. Anytime. Uh, yeah. So you guys uh, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, check us out on iTunes or Apple Podcasts. Check us out on Spotify, wherever you like to check out your favorite podcasts, and make sure you come back for the next episode of Brewed with Hustle. Cheers, brother. Man, Appreciate bro. it. Good Cheers, Casey. Hey, that was a good Thank closing you. thing, but I'm going to throw in an audible Uh-oh. here. We're not oh, done audible. yet. Oh, yeah. shit. Hold up. There's been a flag yeah. thrown, yeah. actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're not done yet. Uh-oh. Man, I just want to say that that Michael being in here today, man, that's that's been a real inspiration, man. Hearing him kind of how he came through the ranks of, man, I started as, yeah. you know, this, and then moved up and stepped up and, man, had a good mentor, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. People out there that are managing places and stuff right now, listen yeah. to this, man. Yeah. Help somebody out, man. Let's get somebody else to the next yep. level. Damn, you know, that's, Casey. That's I know, a, dude. He, now he chimes in with all the gold. Chimes, right. <laughs> After we hacked it all you know, up. <laughs> no, man, no. I, I just wanted to say, man, you know, uh, I haven't met you until tonight. I've tried some of your soda. It's amazing. Thanks, bro. You know, I but that. Dude, I want to hang out. Yeah. Like, uh, we, we need to make, maybe think about doing another podcast that kind of yeah. revolves around something like this. Yeah. So. I yeah. mean, I could Uber home if you guys want to yeah. have yeah. <laughs> we'll take, Let's take chapter two. Yeah, welcome to chapter number two. That's right. That's right. Here's our podcast yeah. tonight. <laughs>
Perfect. What's we cool is this is all editable, so if, yeah. if we yeah, get right, too ripped right, out, right. it'll be yeah. okay. We'd definitely be throwing that explicit tag on the. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> the e tag. Yeah, the little e tag. The, the little yeah, e tag. Yeah. yeah. Cool. No, definitely, Thanks, Casey. I appreciate that. Hey, no, I will man. say what, what we didn't. What we didn't talk more about though that he just brought up is a great point is the mentorship. <laughs> yeah. Right. So not not only having a mentor and make and I mean everybody needs a mentor. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know my mentor Todd. Yeah, Vincent, I so. love Todd. That guy yeah, is such yeah. a great guy. So, um, but also, man, reaching out and mentoring other people that's so is true. a huge and thing. And that's the purpose of this podcast. That helps your heart. It yeah, really yeah, does. Yeah. It'll help you so much. First yep. of all, when you teach people, you learn so much about yep, yourself. Exactly. And you grow. Yeah. And when you help other people grow and you grow, yep. I mean, that's yep. kind of, that's to be honest with you, that's kind of what, yeah. you know, faith and spiritualism is all about. Yep. So now hit the subscribe now, button and right, the like button. It. Now we're done. <laughs> After the audio. And we'll do the third toast. Cheers, guys. Appreciate you.